let us talk about touch technology. Lots of people have become used to tapping, swiping, and scrolling to access information and entertainment. But how do these everyday devices work? How are humans and machines interacting with the slightest touch? And why do touch screens not work when you have gloves on? How does a touch screen work? Touch screens use light emitting diodes, LEDs, to produce images. But how do people interact with the screen? Touch screens work using electricity. The screen is made of glass, an insulating material, it cannot carry an electric current. The surface of the screen is therefore coated with a thin layer of an electrically conducting material such as indium tin oxide. This is chosen because it is transparent. The conducting layer is connected to a low voltage so that for a short time, there is a tiny electric current on the screen. This leaves it with a small electric charge. When your finger touches the screen, some of the small electrical charge flows onto it. Don't worry, the voltages and amounts of electric charge are far too small to give you a shock. Sensitive detectors round the edge of the screen can detect which point on the screen has lost charge so that it knows which point has been touched. If you are wearing gloves the screen won't respond because the material of gloves is an insulator. That's why special gloves are sold which have electrically conducting fingertips for people who need to keep their hands warm when using a touch screen. Benefits Touch screens are becoming very familiar. They are used in Mobile phones and tablets Bank cash machines, station ticket machines Games consoles Once upon a time, the way to get a computer to do something useful was to feed it a stack of cards with holes punched into them. Thankfully, things soon moved on and, by the end of the 20th century, you could get a computer to do things simply by pointing and clicking with a keyboard and a mouse. But the real revolution in making computers easy to use has happened only in the last decade or so with the arrival of touch-sensitive screens. Most smartphones, ebook readers, and some MP3 players already work with simple, touch controls and some laptops work that way too. Touch screens are intuitively easy to use, but how exactly do they work? How is a touch screen different from a keyboard? A touch screen is a bit like an invisible keyboard glued to the front of your computer monitor. To understand how it works, it helps if you know something about how an ordinary keyboard works first. You can find out about that in our article on computer keyboards, but here's a quick reminder. Essentially, every key on a keyboard is an electrical switch. When you push a key down, you complete an electric circuit and a current flows. The current varies according to the key you press and that's how your computer figures out what you're typing. In a bit more detail, here's what happens. Inside a keyboard, you'll find there are two layers of electrically conducting plastic separated by an insulating plastic membrane with holes in it. In fact, there's one hole underneath each key. When you press a key, you push the top conductor layer down towards the bottom layer so the two layers meet and touch through the hole. A current flows between the layers and the computer knows you've pressed a key. Little springy pieces of rubber underneath each key make them bounce back to their original position, breaking the circuit when you release them. Touch screens have to achieve something similar to this on the surface on your computer screen. Obviously they can't use switches, membranes, and bits of plastic or they'd block the view of the screen below. So they have to use more cunning tricks for sensing your touch completely invisibly. How touch screens work. Different kinds of touch screen work in different ways. Some can sense only one finger at a time and get extremely confused if you try to press in two places at once. Others can easily detect and distinguish more than one key press at once. These are some of the main technologies. Resistive. Resistive touch screens, currently the most popular technology, work a bit like transparent keyboards overlaid on top of the screen. There's a flexible upper layer of conducting polyester plastic bonded to a rigid lower layer of conducting glass and separated by an insulating membrane. When you press on the screen, you force the polyester to touch the glass and complete a circuit just like pressing the key on a keyboard. A chip inside the screen figures out the coordinates of the place you touched. When you press a resistive touch screen, 
you push two conducting layers together so they make contact, a bit like an ordinary computer keyboard. Capacitive These screens are made from multiple layers of glass. The inner layer conducts electricity and so does the outer layer, so effectively the screen behaves like two electrical conductors separated by an insulator in other words, a capacitor. When you bring your finger up to the screen, you alter the electrical field by a certain amount that varies according to where your hand is. Capacitive screens can be touched in more than one place at once. Unlike most other types of touch screen, they don't work if you touch them with a plastic stylus, because the plastic is an insulator and stops your hand from affecting the electric field. In a capacitive touch screen, the whole screen is like a capacitor. When you bring your finger up close, you affect the electric field that exists between the inner and outer glass. Infrared Just like the magic eye beams in an intruder alarm, an infrared touch screen uses a grid pattern of LEDs and light detector photo cells arranged on opposite sides of the screen. The LEDs shine infrared light in front of the screen a bit like an invisible spider's web. If you touch the screen at a certain point, you interrupt two or more beams. A microchip inside the screen can calculate where you touched by seeing which beams you interrupted. The touch screen on Sony Reader eBooks, like the one pictured in our photo below, works this way. Since you're interrupting a beam, infrared screens work just as well whether you use your finger or a stylus. An infrared touch screen uses the same magic eye technology that Tom Cruise had to dodge in the movie Mission Impossible. When your fingers move up close, they break invisible beams that pass over the surface of the screen between LEDs on one side and photo cells on the other. Surface Acoustic Wave Surprisingly, this touch screen technology detects your fingers using sound instead of light. Ultrasonic sound waves, too high-pitched for humans to hear, are generated at the edges of the screen and reflected back and forth across its surface. When you touch the screen, you interrupt the sound beams and absorb some of their energy. The screen's microchip controller figures out from this where exactly you touched the screen. A surface acoustic wave screen is a bit like an infrared screen, but your finger interrupts high-frequency sound beams rippling over the surface instead of invisible light beams. Near Field Imaging have you noticed how an old-style radio can buzz and whistle if you move your hand toward it? That's because your body affects the electromagnetic field that incoming radio waves create in and around the antenna. The closer you get, the more effect you have. Near Field Imaging NFI, touch screens work a similar way. As you move your finger up close, you change the electric field on the glass screen, which instantly registers your touch. Much more robust than some of the other technologies, NFI screens are suitable for rough and tough environments, like military use. Unlike most of the other technologies, they can also detect touches from pens, still uses, or hands wearing gloves. With a near field imaging screen, small voltages are applied at the corners, producing an electric field on the surface. Your finger alters the field as it approaches. Light pens. Light pens were an early form of touch screen technology, but they worked in a completely different way to modern touch screens. In old style computer screens, the picture was drawn by an electron beam that scanned back and forth, just like in a cathode ray tube television. The pen contained a photoelectric cell that detected the electron beam as it passed by, sending a signal to the computer down a cable. Since the computer knew exactly where the electron beam was at any moment, it could figure out where the pen was pointing. Light pens could be used either to select menu items or text from the screen, similar to a mouse, or, as shown in the picture here, to draw computer graphics. Advantages of touch screens The great thing about touch screen technology is that it's incredibly easy for people to use. Touch screens can display just as much information, and just as many touch buttons, as people need to complete a particular task and no more, leading people through quite a complex process in a very simple, systematic way. That's why touch screen technology has proved perfect for public information kiosks, ticket machines at railroad stations, electronic voting machines, 
self-service grocery checkouts, military computers, and many similar applications where computers with screens and keyboards would be too troublesome to use. Most of us now own Apple or Android smartphones, which have multi-touch screens. The big advantage here is that the display can show you a screen geared to exactly what you're trying to do with it. If you want to make a phone call, it can display the ordinary digits 0 to 9 so you can dial. If you want to send an SMS text message, it can display a keyboard, in alphabetical order or typewriter style QWERTY order, if you prefer. If you want to play games, the display can change yet again. Touch screen displays like this are incredibly versatile, minute by minute, they change to meet your expectations. Another big advantage of touch screens is that they have no moving parts. A normal computer keyboard has 102 keys, so that's 102 plastic key tops, 204 contact points, 2 per key, and 102 rubber or other springy devices to keep the contacts separate, plus circuit boards, cables, and a lot more besides. You get the picture, hundreds of moving parts and hundreds of things to go wrong. In time, ordinary computer keyboards can and do wear out, laptop keyboards are often very short-lived, touch screens have no parts, so theoretically they never wear out. They're much easier to clean and more hygienic on things like public ticket machines. Limitations of touch screens All of us with smartphones, ebook readers, and tablet computers are familiar with touch screen technology, but touch-based PCs and laptops are still fairly uncommon. Way back in 2008, Microsoft announced that touch technologies would feature prominently in future versions of the Windows operating system potentially making computer mice and keyboards obsolete. Four years later, it unveiled its surface range of laptops with smart built-in touch screens. Sales were initially disappointing, but have gradually improved. Though most of us happily swipe away at our smartphones and tablets every day of our lives, when it comes to work, we're still largely locked into our old-style desktop computers and operating systems, and the old ways of using them namely keyboards and mice. In other words, it's important to recognize that touch technology makes more sense for some applications than others. It's great to point and click on a smartphone app when you're doing something as simple as ordering a pizza or checking your bank balance, but if you want to edit an essay, write complex computer code, debug a broken website, or anything that requires quite a lot of fiddly input, touch screen interfaces can slow you down and frustrate you, they're just too clumsy and imprecise. Most of us who write a lot will find an ordinary computer keyboard far quicker and more accurate than the pop-up keyboards on tablets and smartphones and it's telling that so many people find the need to improve their phones using plug-in keyboards. Rather than trying to be all things to all people, Touch screen devices need to be optimized for those applications where they make most sense. Keyboards, mice, pen tablets, joysticks, speech recognition, and other forms of input will continue to work happily alongside them for many years to come. Thank you for watching this video.